back everyone to the hello world guys this is another episode of the better ssml mario series and in this video what we are going to do is we are going to create a system to store and uh, read our map files so how do we do that well if our map were to be something very complicated uh, what you might want to do is you might want to create a custom editor for that and that was what my original plan was but then i realized our map is a grid based map and does not contain any complicated objects that we may need to you know change so creating an editor might be overkill for our small program uh, and instead of doing this what we are going to do uh, is that uh, we are going to basically create uh, a way to load a map from a png file from an image instead of an actual map so what is an image of course we all know what an image is and it's uh, uh, as behind the scenes it's just an array of pixels so we can use that as what we want to ha have our uh, map made up of so uh, and of course we can change diff have different uh, pixel values mean different things so what we are going to do is first of all uh, we have got this function and uh, let's create a function that will allow us to uh, you know load our map inside of the map class and this will actually not be load map but it will take an image and it will uh, construct a map from that and uh, how we are going to load that image that's up to the main program so that should keep everything nice and simple and clean so let's get started doing that so in order to do that you might want to create a method here like uh, void load but uh, calling it load will not actually be correct since we are not loading it in here but we will instead only take an image and that would allow us to separate stuff we will take an image and we will load it from that image and uh, we will call it init from image you might want to call it load but that's actually not going to be exactly correct because uh, we are not actually loading from the image we are instead what we are going to do is we are going to take an image and basically initialize it from that so we are going to make it create from image instead uh, because uh, with our create checkerboard that matches more accurately and we are going to take a const reference to an sf colon colon image and uh, the reason we are not using a texture here is quite obvious we are not using this for drawing so there is no need to use a texture and image is much better an image basically is quite in an image that uh, we don't really use for drawing as uh, you cannot pass an image for a sprite but you can create textures from image so what we are going to do is when we are doing map uh, create from image what we are going to do is uh, we essentially what we, uh, by the way one thing you might notice is that this is giving us a warning because uh, it says that a bitwise XOR was intended even though we did indent a logical operator not a bitwise one but you can see it's giving us and the reason it's giving us is because this is an integer and we should probably take it uh, to a boolean since they are interchangeable this would make the warning go away anyways so now back to our create from image method and in here the first thing we want to do is we want to clear anything previously that we had we want to clear the previous grid so you might want to create a method here called reset that would reset the map but actually such a method will not be necessary because our grid is public and it will take only one literally one line to uh, clear the map so we don't really need to do that so what we are going to do is go under map.cpp and say grid dot arrays and that will uh, not actually erase because that uh, allows us to erase a particular part of the grid and we are going to say grid dot clear and that will basically clear the whole vector and any sub vectors it has so with that with that cleared what we are going to do is we are going to set it to a new vector and by the way we don't actually need to call the clear since it's when we create a new vector it will automatically get rid of the uh, a previous one but you might want to do this anyways so let's uh, go here and uh, you can see that it's uh, actually not the intelligence is not uh, detecting we should probably include sfml slash graphics dot h here so sfml slash graphics dot h even though render is including it sometimes there are problems with intelligence so let's just do that and uh, let's go back here and uh, intelligence is still not recognizing it but that's just an intelligence problem we can go ahead and say get size and we can say dot x here for example and uh, that would uh, give us the width and what we are going to do now is uh, uh, make it uh, be filled with vectors because this is a vector of vector and for this we are going to pass it the y value just like we were doing in the create checkerboard but we were actually using width and height there now we are using the x and y coordinates and for the actual values let's just initialize it all to zero so we are going to create a for loop here that uh, goes uh, has a variable called i and it goes over the uh, grid dot uh, size here grid dot size not length 
actually yes size so let's go over that and uh, what we are going to do is we are going to go another loop and we are going to say grid i dot size which means the actual value uh, of that column so we are basically doing what we did in a career checkerboard but this time we are using a standard for loop for reasons that uh, we actually want to keep a track of the x and y by the way i'm going to change this to x and y instead of something like i and j because that makes a lot more sense you can see now we've got y here and uh, yeah that's all pretty awesome but we want to make sure we say grid x dot size not grid y dot size so in here what we can do is uh, uh, we can actually say grid x y is equal to this value we can set it to whatever value we like we might say is equal to image dot get pixel for getting the pixel but of course we don't want to set it equal to that pixel instead we want to basically have an internal format and specific pixel means specific thing so I've decided that whenever uh, there is uh, white, uh, there is black, that would mean that there is a pixel and when it's white there, mm, there would be no uh, map value there. So we will say image.getPixel and uh, we will say x and y and uh, we will store this value in an sf column colon color and let's just uh, call it color because uh, pixel value is a color after all so we will do that and now what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll basically create a bunch of if statements for different types of things that we want our map to contain but uh, for now we are just going to have a single if statement here uh, which uh, is black black for the mm, you know when there is a tile there so we are going to say if color is equal to sf colon colon color colon colon black which means all values are zero then what we are going to do is uh, say color is equal actually not color is equal to we are going to say grid x y is equal to one since currently we only have one texture we are just going to set it to one here uh, and later we will have different stuff of course but for now we are going to do that and you might want to have multiple values here depending on different things you want to have but for now we are going to keep it at one so that's all pretty awesome and now we, it's all up to us to actually use this method now since we are only using textures in the resources uh, tag colon colon textures we are going to when we are going to create a main menu we will create a better system for that currently we are just going to create an image uh, a private variable since we are only using it once we are going to load this image from a file that I've created uh, called map.png and then what we are going to do is say image dot uh, uh, yeah actually not image we are going to say map dot create from image and we are going to pass it our image and we only need the image for this function and after that the compiler will discard it so that's all pretty awesome now to actually access it I have already created a map.png here let's just open that up real quick and what you can see is that indeed we do happen to have a bit of a map here this red pixel uh, we have got uh, is uh, not going to be used for now and uh, you can see this is a basic map and uh, we actually made this in the previous uh, beginner Mario series and this time it's advanced we are going to use the same map for now but have a bunch of other colors meaning a bunch of other things as well so if I open up this map.png and uh, I open up the properties uh, actually I close the properties so uh, if I go ahead and open up the properties uh, hit right uh, here you can see that this map is 20 uh, pixels high so what we are going to do is in game.cpp I am actually going to change the size of the map because you can see that the tiles were way too large so we are going to change it to 16 the actual tile size and now let's just run that and see if it works or not so what you should be able to see is that uh, uh, you know uh, it is going to compile everything pretty o nicely and now we, what we should have is a static display of the very first portion of the map not the whole, whole of it of course and uh, you can see that uh, yeah you can see that we have got the display of the first part of the map but uh, we can't view the rest of the map so in order to view the rest of the map it might be uh, you know interesting to have uh, a way to move the camera so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to basically create a system to allow us to you know um, go left and right in our scene and for that what we are going to do is we are going to create a const float here and we are going to call it movement speed and of course this speed highly depends on your own pref preferences what you want it to be let's uh, start with uh, a low value and say 10 for example and now let's go ahead and try to implement the actual movement so for getting keyboard input in sfml it's uh, extremely easy uh, we can of course use events but we want to get continuous event uh, input right now so we are going to say if uh, uh, if sf colon colon keyboard colon colon if key pressed and here we need to pass a key so we we'll say sf colon colon keyboard colon colon up of course you can use a bunch of other keys currently we are only going to implement horizontal movement not vertical movement you can of course implement it as uh, a and d 
uh, if you want that kind of input and of course you can implement up and down movement on your own but for now I'm going to implement only horizontal so we'll say camera dot position dot x if the right key is pre uh, pressed then we'll say camera dot position dot x and we'll add to it uh, the move speed we'll just add the move speed to it and when we are uh, moving towards the left we need to subtract the move speed and uh, that is going to move our camera left and right quite nicely so let's go ahead and uh, uh, yeah we should run that and what you should see is that there's a very big problem with the way this occurs and uh, once this uh, runs what you should see is that uh, and there is indeed a pretty big problem since it's uh, not really stable and it sometimes moves way too fast the reason is we need to multiply this by delta time so that it runs on a constant uh, uh, you know kind of uh, constant speed at all frame rates and let's just increase the moment speed to 20 and once this runs i have a feeling that 20 will also be too low so yeah you can see that uh, 20 is also pretty low so let's crank it up to 100 and uh, now run it and what you should see is that we do get a much better speed and uh, yeah you can see i can kind of go over the map and it looks exactly like it was supposed to in the image now what we are going to do is we might want to implement a mechanism that allows us to move faster if we are holding down the shift key for this we are going to create a float called move and set it equal to uh, movement speed for now so let's just say movement speed and if our shift key is pressed we can say is uh, sf colon colon keyboard colon colon is key pressed and uh, you can see there are two shifts here a left and right shift we'll just say l shift which means left shift for now and what you'll do is if that's the case then we will say move multiply equals two so we'll just double it now we can quite easily go ahead and uh, change this to move instead of movement speed just change it to that move variable that we had and if i run it now uh, i'm going to also crank the speed up to 180 for default so that it's uh, i feel like 100 is also a bit low so let's do that and uh, what you should see is that we do indeed get a much smoother movement of the camera and this is with shift and without shift as well you can see it works and the map is also displayed completely correctly so that means that we have got our map system implemented in the next video we will start implementing the actual game logic sticks and stuff so we'll do that in the future videos make sure to like and subscribe as well i'll see you in the next one and bye